Hey, this right. is Threat from NIP, and you're listening to TCR. Okay, so let's start. Hello and welcome, everyone, to another edition of The Center Ring, a.k.a. TCR, a.k.a. your favorite eSports podcast. Episode 83 coming to you live from a pre-recorded, undisclosed location. The date, November 20th, 2017. The time, 6.22 p.m. Doing it a day early this week because the holiday coming up. You know how that goes. We have the best episode ever for you, if I must say so myself. Basically just going to recap IEM Oakland, CSGO, PUBG did their first official official tournament, so we will see how that goes. Give our thoughts on it. Maybe maybe not so much. Maybe it didn't hit the mark. Maybe it did. We'll see. We'll see what uh, everyone has to say about that. But first, let's say hi to the crew. Of course, I'm here. My name is Tim. We also have Brett. Hello, Brett. What's up, family? We also have Anuj. Hello, Anuj. What up, fam? How y'all doing? Good Good to have you both here on this uh, festive episode. (laughs) As we are thankful for our uh, listener. Not plural, just the one. Um, let's get, um, let's get the, the basics out of the way here. Follow us on social media. We are at the center ring on Twitter. You can also hit us up on our website, tcr.gg. You have all of our social links there. Join our discord. We got a group there. We, uh, chat it up. Feel free to play with us. Uh, you'll typically find Brett and myself on, on some overwatch and, uh, let's face it, our ranks. They're not going up anytime soon, so don't feel bad if you suck. (laughs) We are stuck in Overwatch hell. But all that can be found on tcr.gg. Of course, as I said... The viewing improved. Whoa, you are really loud. We'll fix that as we go along. But yes, it is a new website. You are correct. Loud and ooch. It's the first time we've ever said that. Loud and ooch. Why don't you back back the mic up just a bit? Why don't we do something? I like to keep it right on my mouth, actually. It's just right on the, just right on the lips. Just let it, just let it sit right there on the lips, just the tip, <laughs> just the tip of it's the microphone. It's gonna get awkward quick. <laughs> it's only awkward if you make it awkward, man. I'm just talking about the microphone. <laughs> uh, we got E News, we got IEM. Let's get into it right now. Um, PUBG, PUBG had its first like initial, I guess, kickoff. We've we've seen it in the past because we've talked about it on the show. You've had its charity events. You've had streamer events, but this is like the first, um, unless you caught the one that was in Korea or somewhere just last weekend at the same time. But this was ESL's first venture into hosting a fully professional PUBG event. This was a, and correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, gentlemen, 100 man, but squad base. So 80, it's at 80 man, 80 man, 80 man. So it's yeah. what? 20 squads, uh, 16 squads. Yeah. Someone do the 20 man. squads, 20 squads yeah. and uh, best of eight. So they do it the, with the what's been working lately for PUBG tournaments where it's like a point system. So depending on where you ended up in the game, you got points based off of that. And they do it over a stretch of games. This was eight. Seems about the only fair format for this style of a game where it's very RNG based, if you will. Yeah, principal scoring system. I mean, yeah. 300 points for a win and 10 points for a kill. Yeah, and uh, I don't really want to break into the action because, let's face it, there wasn't really much to break down as far as exciting plays or anything like that. Or um, maybe it's maybe the scale is too large to really see the strategy play out other than don't die. But I know just from what our discussion was in Discord and the show's Discord throughout the week, kind of disappointed. Yeah, I mean, it's Dr. Disrespect's, uh, wor- you know, worst fears coming to fruition, right? Like, he talked about, like, the 
the early game story, uh, there really wasn't one because people were avoiding each other and it's just looting and you just, you, you, you have that large, you know, overview map of you can see where people are and looting TSM's always going to be in North George, blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's just, it's boring the the, the beginning game is, is just, it's not fun to watch. And I, and people avoid each other because you can't defend yourself. Even with one and a half times, you know, rifle pickups, you still may not find loot in the first couple of houses you find. So, I mean, it's just not going to be exciting until, you know, like we were talking about a few episodes ago, um, you know, they maybe starting with a weapon or something, but it, it's just, you lose interest early and it's hard to keep, stay in the game as a viewer for that end game, that late game circle when things start getting interesting so it's just yeah i mean the first like five and a half minutes of the game you're basically just watching people go loot right they're showing you the map they're showing you where everybody's spread out you're not watching anybody in first person the first few minutes for sure they're kind of giving you a general idea they're not building a story right like they're just showing you people run around aimlessly you pray that the first circle is somewhere around you um, I believe the very first game, the circle spawned on like a far side of the map and put a lot of teams in, you know, terrible position phase and all these guys. But it was, I mean, it's just, I don't know. It was just hard as a viewer to like get into it. What I enjoyed of these matches was about the last two and a half minutes of, of each game. The circle yeah. got down small. You could see people's tactical play come into play. I believe Cloud9 had a cool setup where they had like three cars around them and made a barrier. It was like, oh, wow, that's like that's like pretty that's neat, awesome. you know? Yeah. Um, and, and that was like fun to see, but it was just such a small amount of time. It was literally the last two minutes. So just found it hard to like grab onto, especially when you're watching a high-level Counter-Strike at the same time where a story is being built in each game and each round. Um, you just didn't really get that in PUBG. Well, yeah, and a lot of, it, well, just one point, and a lot in the story was for a lot of teams. I know one of my favorite team to watch, teams to watch is TSM. I watch, I, I watch, you know, the, a lot of a lot of their streams. Uh, uh, you know, they were chasing the circle. I know there was one match where they literally chased the circle five circles in a row. They they'd get in and then they would have to run, you know, a far distance. So it's just, it, it's what we deal with. It run simulator it's it's not fun for anyone and they need to find a way to to fix i mean just start with the circle right? i think just start with the circle you don't have to have it go to the edge of there were teams like in-game circle that are just like on on the edge of the circle and they don't have to move at all it, it's already on them there are many factors involved that. yes they're, they're like the circle is an issue too but i think one of the main issues is the translation of what how we play PUBG and how a pro with money on the line is going to play PUBG. Like, even if they know where the circle's going to be, don't you feel like the fact that money was on the line affected the way they play? I mean, look at, like, just from, like, the streamers that you watch playing it, a lot of times they'll go full YOLO in a game because that's, that's the entertaining, that's the fun factor of it. It's the fun part of the stream, yeah. right? So, like, you grow into liking the game. And even, like, when we play, you know, Lord knows if you let Anuj drive a vehicle in PUBG, we're going to die in the next 30 seconds. Like, just Maybe. without a Maybe doubt. Maybe 40. <laughs> okay. He's, well, about the, he's all about that speed. And it's, where, where's the hey, next I'm jump? trying to get from point A to point B that's and make right. it look cool. Like, how many points can I get? But, just like in, but that speaks you know, to the point, though, where it's like, okay, so that is trying to get from point A to B as fast as possible, as aggressive as possible. But if we were playing and money was on the line, you best believe I'm going to, like, force Anuj to drive like a grandma and make sure we're going to the right places and not getting jumped. It's it's exactly how we play almost either way, right? Like, because if we're in that one of those moods where we're like, okay, let's like try and win one now, you know, like we've kind of messed yeah. around enough, let's get a win. What do we do then? We play it safe and slow it down, and it's like a much more boring game that way. It's not nearly as entertaining, but hey, we're playing to win, right? Like we want to get the win. If we're playing to have fun, it's going to be a totally different play style. It's going to be hard to see this change. You know, even with tournament two, three, four, five, like the concept is always the same. Wait for the circle, 
And if you're fortunate enough to be in it, you're going to hole up somewhere once you have what you feel is good enough gear. And if you're outside of the circle, you're slowly working your way in. And I don't see many fixes other than maybe like increasing circle damage because you see a team like TSM, they love to play in the circle. They'll wait a circle or two before they even start moving in and they're okay taking the damage. They're all about, you know, getting as much loot as possible before going in to make a play. Where Tempo Storm, you saw them, I think, again, it was in game one where the circle like spawned right on them and they basically hold up in a house and they, you know, they got top five because of it. I think yeah. that's a lot. So speeding up the pace of the game, but early on, right? I don't care. I don't mind so much the slower pace game at late game if I see the strategy of like, okay, how are we going to push this building or how are we going to approach this, you know, maybe one of the final couple five circles, say, right? Like the smaller circles. Because that's you can honestly get a good observer story going on at the end. It's the early games, right? Like a news like you were saying, that circle needs to may I'll give you the first one because you don't want to spawn on the other side of the map and then the circle just is on the opposite, right? You don't want to go north and then the circle's in the military base. But that second or third circle should be punishment. That should be enough to where it's like, hey guys, we can't be caught outside of this or we are just going to get lit up with damage. But even the first circle, like if imagine if the first circle did real damage to you. It would make you loot quick. Granted, it might not be fair for a team that's, you know, stuck on one side. But, hey, you know, like, we know what's happening at that point. Like, not everybody is going to have the same loot going into the last fight. I don't know if that should be the objective of the game for them. Like, everybody should be decked out in level three stuff. Then just give it to them. Like, I just mean, start the game the, with everything. The right? other outcome is making the map smaller. But that's already, you're past the point of that because PUBG is kind of known for its large map size. The only way you're going to make the map in theory, smaller at this point is making those circles do more damage earlier on. And then that way think having, people consolidate into it. Do y'all think having more maps will make this more entertaining if they have like a four or five map cycle, let's Absolutely. say in the next six months? I, yeah, I would say so because you know, you're watching eight maps, the same map, the same teams going to the same place. It, it just gets stale and it gets boring. Like I, I watched there were four maps two days. I watched two maps one day, two maps another day because I could not keep my attention on it. Like it's, it was too boring to watch and too stale to watch. And like partially, I, I, and I get that it's the first tournament, but that's somewhat the observer's fault, right? And I don't know how this works, like behind the scenes. Like, is it the observers? The are are the observers the director? Right. That's what I I honestly don't know the answer for that. Like, if you I, have the cameraman showing there but is it really like the director's fault for not going to a certain camera view right because there were like eight observers involved and yet you would you would see the kill feed constantly there were fights going around and they would sit and watch some dude res his teammate like he'd be sitting there reviving his teammate while there's fights going on and they go to the guy that's downed not the guy that's shooting well I would I would hope that it's more director based because there are some good observers that were doing the observing in this PUBG um, event. I I just think that I mean they got to find a better way. Like more, um, I read Sapphire uh, Sapphire's tweet um, of we need more POV. Like no one wants to see you know a dude running up a hill just bouncing up and down. You know and and too many times, and I don't know if you guys saw this or not, but there were there were several points where uh, Pansy, which by the way, I, I love Pansy. She's great. She's entertaining. Yeah, I like her too. But there there were several points in that match where where she's like, "Can we get a replay of that?" Yeah, okay, yeah, I heard that not, so many times we're, too. We're, we're not going to get a replay of that. Okay, all right. So on to this, and it's like, come on. I mean, if if you're if you're not going to catch a kill like an important kill, like a 3K or 4K or, you know, a squad wipe or something, there has to be some sort of maybe replay system uh, just showing that fight because they have uh, just one real quick point because, you know, Dr. Disrespect, he has that boom, you know, that boom app where, you know, if something big happens, they can go back and play it. There's something like that to where we, if we miss it, no big deal. We'll see the replay. Again, and I don't know how it was working on behind the scenes, but it almost seems like there was a lack of manpower, right? Like, Mm-hmm. It, it, like to your point, Brett. If there's going to be anything where it's involving, say, a replay or something, maybe have two replay directors where 
you know, they're just constantly basically capturing almost any kill as it's going on. And then that way, say we're watching, you know, TSM versus Cloud9 in George Pool. But then there's a fight going on at the school, and all of a sudden you see one dude get a triple kill. I understand that you're not going to see that happen on stream because it's just it's too much going on at once, right? I can't fault you mm-hmm. for that. But they should have the ability then to be like, whoa, what just happened at the school? Let's see what happened. And then you pull up a replay of it and just watch it. I don't think anyone will mind if there's that type of delay going on in the match. Yeah, right. like when the when the streaming technology gets better, um, I think the observers are, are good. I mean, Brett mentioned them, Sapphire and you know Prism. These guys, these guys are all or Prius or whatever. These guys are like good at what they do. You know, um, it's tough because again, part of it is it's it's a new game, right? They're really observing for the first time in it. Yeah. But like once the ability to stream gets better, where they can do like a good split screen or even like a quad screen, and you see like a whole team running and their point of views on what's happening, and they're kind of going in and out. I think that would help, and and that's going right. to come with time, well, right? Just give the give the observers more tools in their tool belt. Give them a better way to to record so many replays. And I say observers, I really just mean like the production team, that, the whole crew. Yeah, yeah, the whole crew. Give the whole crew more tools to work with when it comes to replay. I think it was Anuji. I was talking to you throughout the tournament, saying like it almost seems like one stream for this isn't oh. enough. Like, so you have twenty teams going on it right now. Why don't you have two streams? Stream one will consist of a focal point of 10 different teams, and then stream two, the 10 others. That way, if I typically want to watch Cloud9, okay, well, I know Cloud9 is assigned to stream B, and I can just kind of watch stream B more, or at least open up two streams at once and then just watch them. But it gives me a little bit more options. It puts stress off of the directing team. You can kind of almost split that up into two teams, splitting the responsibility. And that way you don't have one stream trying to capture 80 kills. Yeah, and I, I, you know, just building off of that thought process, this is going back to Counter-Strike. I believe it was E-League that did that, where you could see the individual players' screens. Yeah. So, you know, and I really like that. I dig that. You know, if I want to watch my favorite player, their crosshair position and what have you, I can go and watch that one one dude. Um but yeah, you know, I, I would agree that that could that could make things a little bit better and just, you know, like you more to your point, less stress on the um, uh, director of observers, crew, yeah, you know, just, to catch. Yeah, I mean, look at how hard it is even in Counter Strike to catch all the action. And in Counter Strike, it's two teams of five men each, and you know yeah. where the action's pretty much taking place on a CS map, right? You know the choke points. Yeah. You know where like. You know, you know where stuff is happening. Teams are setting up by throwing smoke. So, you know, like, hey, let me turn to this. And we still miss action. Now we're talking about 80 players on a map a thousand times the size of CS. And you're expecting them to capture each each individual play as it's happening. So not having a replay system, I think, is like a total joke. Or like I said, even multiple streams or being able to do split screens. Um, I don't know if they have the technology in here to allow you to like pick a team to watch or pick a player to watch. Cause I agree. There's certain players that I, you know, enjoy watching. I would rather watch them rather than watching all 80 random individuals that I don't know. Anything that can minimize the high map overview. Like it was just anything to minimize that. Cause I felt like anytime you looked up, they were just showing you for the first half of the game just an overview of the map with all of their dots running around shooting. And, you know, yeah. God bless the play-by-play guys because they were trying to call <laughs> the game from that angle. And it just, it's like, dude, I'm, I'm sorry. This just, you're making and, it exciting. You sound excited. I'm just not exactly. feeling it right now. Yeah, and, and you know, that, that was the one shining spot was, you know, with the play-by-play, both of them. I enjoyed uh, listening to them. But can, can we... Uh, you know, get to the get to the other part of of the production. Uh, did you guys listen to uh, Steel? You know, Steel and you know the the other panel panelists. So panelists, my theory is they we picked, talked about this too. Yeah, my theory is they picked Steel up because of his name. I've never thought once of Steel being like, oh, this guy really knows his PUBG. And furthermore, he, 
He doesn't. Yeah, he, like he <laughs> was awful. It was so awful. It was so awkward to listen. Just to so it. generic, and right? Like was. everything was a generic, basic statement. It was. It was you know, uh, I think Noble is really going to want to finish top five in this match if they if they want to stand a chance. No, well, even, you know, more generic, yeah. even, even more generic than that. You well, the teams are just trying to get as much loot as they can before they move into the circle. It's like um, they're going to want to get as yeah. many kills as they can. That way, they're on top. <laughs> like, I okay. Like, what does that bring would, anything to this? And I, I would hope. I would hope that. I would hope that he maybe maybe they just told him when was the talent announced for this does anybody know because i'm just hoping that i have no idea they, he was just maybe like last minute like hey dude uh we we need you and this like, is not so much <laughs> knocking an steel because i've seen steel break down counter strike before the dude can it's break good. down he can break things down to the next level this was not breaking it down to the next oh, level yeah i mean cs he's incredible and if you watch even his stream he you know a lot of time takes the time to break down a play he'll watch demos a lot on stream especially since he's been playing with torque and, and kind of break them down in front of people this he did uh, not know I mean, it was obvious it was, wasn't he was good, so buddy. obvious wasn't no good. no and i know a lot and of it's, and it's not his fault you know they no. asked him to do it if somebody's gonna pay me to go do it sure i'll go break down as much PUBG well, as i can for you but we're gonna do the research right <laughs> like well even him i'm sure like, he like, did look. without being a true expert in the game or like playing the game at a high level, it's also hard to know that stuff without there being any sort of meta in place. Right now, it's just right. I just felt like offline, stream, you know, they, there were offline games. You know, just go and watch something on. You know, I felt like they would have been better off just getting someone in there like Summit, or even like getting Shroud. Like I want someone but, in there that lives and breathes PUBG to where they could tell me about the map and be like, oh, well, you know what would have worked better is, you know, two houses down, there's this angle that you can get from here, or he should have pushed more aggressive there. I... It's, a shroud Doctor Disrespect duo on, on stage there? That like, been at least for the entertainment watch, value, right? that would have yeah. been better. But uh, the other thing, and then we'll move on to Counter-Strike, is that people were kind of poking fun on, and this is the one thing that, like, I really feel like they nailed was the stage presentation the fact that people are making fun of like the cubicle war aspect of it but my question to them is like what did you want them to do there's, there's 80 there's people nothing. 80 people <laughs> what did you want them to like be in a circle that would take up the entire building i thought it was pretty cool i didn't i, didn't I did mind too the setup at all like yeah. everyone was making fun of the the cubicle warfare setup and i was like i thought that was kind of cool man like if like, imagine yeah. if that was, like, a Counter-Strike setup and you had, you know, 20 teams playing all at the same time to, like, speed up a... I don't know. I, I thought kind that was kind of cool. Yeah. To complain about. That's what so, I'm like. Out of all the things you can complain about, that's going to be the one? The one thing that has zero effect on your watching experience? Yeah. So, just one one real quick thing. Uh, you know, I, you said that was the last point, but... Did... In watching this... And, you know, when whenever you die in-game, like, you know, when we're playing... The spectating, the the first person point of view and aiming, is is just awkward. Did you guys get that same effect in watching some of the some of the shots? Like, um, I, I I noticed it a few times when you know teams were trying to shoot a car that the crosshair was way behind the car when it was firing. Did you guys notice that at all? Yeah, you couldn't like uh, tell if they like sucked and were like aiming three feet behind the car, or if it was some sort of disconnect between. What they're seeing, what's actually coming on stream, and then what's being viewed on our end, right? Um, okay, but I did yeah, notice that, that, yeah, like where somebody was like way behind, you're like, no, no, they're probably going to be better than this because I wouldn't be yeah. that far behind. Yeah, so I mean, the just needs to be fixed. There's the whole game, much the game's an early access game. It's not ready for, for this stage yet. No, except for I will say right. the fact that uh, there was real no huge technical delay compared to a 10 man Counter Strike match that seems to every time have a 30 minute delay. Well, they did they restart did a game. One. Yeah, they they did have That was more so one. game issues though, rather than just like sorry, my headphones that I use every day uh, are deciding not to work or oh my yeah, my like keyboard the, the my, my USB <laughs> keyboard that I just happened to plug in here isn't wanting to work. Uh I've noticed the, CS players the, the, the are terrible issue. with 3 4 water. 5 millimeter jacks. Like, they just can't seem to get anything right on USB or plugging in headphones. It's incredible. And speaking of those CSGO players, you did have 
kind of the premier. I mean, it's it's what IEM Oakland has always been about, and that is Counter Strike. Pretty, pretty, pretty good little tournament, I must say so myself. I do want to, and Brett, I'm going to put you on the spot, but not right now, mm -hmm. because it's going to create a debate, and I just want to get through the actual game discussion first, and then I'll call you out. But it was a pretty good tournament, like especially in the scale of recent CSGO tournaments. I mean, this one had some big teams. The competition was good. There was upsets all involved. Uh, I'll kind of quickly just go through the standings, and then we'll talk about it. Um, we mentioned it last week, though. I mean, Team Liquid, they struggled. They tied for last place. Um, obviously, picking up steel, though. Not going to look into that too much. French teams shared 9th and 10th with Envious and G2. Renegades and Astralis got 7th and 8th. Gambit and Optic, 5th and 6th. And then you made it to the playoffs, where uh, Cloud9 and SK got 3rd and 4th. And the upset of the tournament was NIP, basically throughout the whole tournament, was one big upset, but then they defeated FaZe. Mm -hmm. Pretty, um, I mean, pretty stout competition from everyone. I want to kind of start with the semifinals, though, because I know we were really excited in Anuj thinking, man, Nip just took out SK. How awesome would it be to see a Cloud9 Nip Grand Finals? That didn't happen. You had FaZe beating Cloud9 in the semis. Uh, can we talk about SK for a second? Yeah. What do you want to talk about? Are we... I don't want to say worried. I mean, Bolts, Bolts is working for them, right? Or am I... So, like, I don't want to... I don't... And call me out here, because I know I give SK a lot of hard times, but let's face it. When they're the number one in the world, I want to give them a hard time when we can. Do you think the Bolts is Bolts is going to work out with the team? Yeah, I mean, it depends on what you're comparing it to, right? Like, if you're going to compare it to the FNX era, I don't see you. I don't think you're going to see that again from this team. I don't think we'll see that sort of dominance, especially when I think the competition is right now the best it's ever been, right? So, is SK going to get back to its old form of where they're winning major after major? No, then it's going to be a failure if that's how you're looking at it. But they're going to consistently be in semifinals and grand finals. I don't think that'll change a whole lot. They ran into a hot NIP team in this tournament, but we also saw NIP take out FaZe in a best of five of all things. You right. know? So it's yeah. hard to sit there and be like, oh gosh, I can't believe they let that, that slip through. I mean, NIP was hot. So I think SK is primed to win another major. They've put themselves, I think, in the best position they can be in. Um I, I still think the Bolts pickup is good, but again, it's early to tell, right? They play in two yeah. tournaments like together. I said, I, it's, uh, and, it's being overcritical right now, but... Yeah. yeah. And I, 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 I'm not worried about SK either. Um, you know, they don't need another superstar. Bolt is the kind of player that they just... That, that team needs. They already have the superstars. They need that guy that can just be an anchor. Um, but they're not going to be that dominant team anymore. I mean, teams are getting better. Astralis is always going to be there uh phase you know they're a super team they're always going to be there you know nip with res and Dr uh, draken are going to get better um i mean it's just there's parody uh, again it feels that way when, with uh with counter-strike there's that one hot team that you feel is just unbeatable and then it comes back down to earth and there's parody again so i'm not worried about sk um i think it'll work out just fine the, the team that i'm worried about is g2 G2 yeah, has had a lot of time, and they've they've come up big, and I know they've won a couple of tournaments, ESL Pro League, and I know there's one or two others mixed in there. But when they're not winning these tournaments, they're performing very poorly in them. Um, you don't see consistent high-level play from G2. I thought being in the weakest group, uh, well, weakest group, though there's only two I groups. mean, they won the Dreamhack the Malmo, groups. and they got third at Epicenter. But other than that, I mean, it's... Fifth, yeah, and ESL fifth, Pro League was like, place, felt like a year place. ago at this point. Yeah, I mean, they've, so, they're yeah, either they're winning not, or they are not even underperforming. It. Even in this tournament, they went two and three. Um, one of the wins was an overtime win. Um, minus one for round differential for the whole tournament. And you just, for what we would consider and we've called and everybody has called the French super team, I, I don't think that they are anything that special. Um, I think Envious is, plays at the same level at the, some of these big events like they do. I was just about so, to bring up that point because you mentioned French Super Team, which was a, it's a, um, 
that's a that's a phrase we haven't heard in a long time, right? Like that was the even back in May when ESL Dallas was going on, that was still part of like the narrative of any time you brought any of the either one, Envious or G2, hey, which one was the French super team? And now it's kind of turned into like if if you're a French Counter-Strike fan, I would be very worried that you're going to you're going the wrong direction. Like for both of these teams, and there's not a whole lot of ways that you can fix it at the moment. You've already done the French shuffle. Now you're also now the only really way out is going outside of those two teams and outside of that it's kind of all a gamble, right? It's all a risk on as far as where you're going. French Counter-Strike as a whole is kind of in a in yeah, a scary I mean, maybe you see spot. Scream get moved. I mean, it's still surprising to me that Scream wasn't on the initial team. Um, but maybe you move somebody like him around. But yeah, there's not. I mean, I don't. The thing is, I don't know the talent in their tier two teams, right? Like the up and coming talent. So maybe there are some people that are brewing. But from their level one tier, top tier talent, there there aren't many things. Like you said, there's just not a whole lot you can do that hasn't happened before. Or a group of players that haven't played together. Really, other than, you know, like I said, potentially Scream, you know, getting swapped back and forth again. And then you have Cloud9 made it to semis. I mean, they looked they looked fine. I, Cloud9 is such a difficult team to judge because they played really well the entire tournament. And then in the semis, they just... It, it, it's like every time Cloud9, I almost want to say, is like a mental thing. Because it's any time they're on the big stage or after they've had a big win... It's like they don't know what to do when they get there, and I don't know. Cloud- we've been in. We've seen every type of, you know, roster change for Cloud Nine, and the end result is always the same. Hmm. Cl- Cloud Nine is like one of the best non-elite teams out there. You know, they when they play anybody, and I say anybody, any of the top three, um, and maybe even throw G two in there to a certain extent. But if they play SK, Astralis, and Phase. They can't beat them. You know, they just can't do it. They they haven't been able to do it. It's it's kind of the same storyline. There's a lot of hope going in. Um, they're just not on the same level as those teams, whether that comes to in-game calling. I don't think they still have any type of great leadership. Tarek is, is doing what he can. And they prefer, like I said, they beat up on the best non-elite teams. You know, they, again, they play these gambits. They can play Optic. Liquid, they tend to do really well against those teams, and Liquid's a great team. Liquid's a team that beats all of the top tier teams, but something with them just, I just, you can't feel too confident when they play any one of the top three. Which is what you always said about Nip leading up to this, because really, since last IEM Oakland, Ninjas and Pajamas haven't done anything to make you think that they were going to win this year. But here they are getting first in Group A. And then knocking out SK 2-1. to one. And then as Anuj, you said it earlier, not in a best of three, but in a best of five, which I think was is like the biggest surprise out of all of it, is that it was in a best of five beat phase. Because everyone's always said best of ones are trash, right? Anyone can win in a best of one. Best of three mm-hmm. is typically the way to go. But a best of five, you're going to find out who's the better team. So are we here saying today... On episode 83 of TCR, that Nip is a better team than FaZe? No. If you if you look at the if you look at the last, what was it, like 17 matches that FaZe and Nip have played each other, and they played a they've played each other a lot recently. I think Nip's beat them twice before I am Oakland in the last like 17 matches or something like that. You can fact yeah. check me on that, but that's around there uh, though. Yeah. So no. No. Nip was a better team on this day. Yeah, exactly. You know? They're a better team on this day, but I don't they are not better than FaZe at this moment. They're just well, they're just not. And it'd be go. nice head, to see how head Nip to can head. follow this. Phase up. fourteen Nip two. <laughs> there you go. See? That's pretty rough. <laughs> that's that's, yes. that's, that's rough. a rough one. But guess what? Yeah. Nip got the one that matters. Yeah. Yeah. And it'll be cool and to see like Nip follow up in the major. Like, how are they going to do in the major now that they've, you know, uh, went, oh, uh, oh, uh, a new, uh, yeah. Um, and oh. That's a, I want to use that as a as a jumping off point. So, Machine <laughs> tweeted out saying like, "This is I'm wrongly quoting him, but he basically said it's a flaw in the CS:GO system where you have a team beat the number one 
as in nip beating phase in a best of five, and yet they they're done. Their their major chances are done. And although I agree, if you're just taking this tournament as the sample size, that is disappointing, right? And I think there you can make the argument. There are a lot of good teams not making it to the major. But you know me, I'm I'm never really the one to, um, I don't know, like show sympathy in, in that sense. Nip had every chance to qualify for the major. Look, you can't lose to Team 5 and Team Pride and like... Yeah. Complain you just about can't it. lose to those teams. You just cannot do that. Um, this was a, this was heroic. an example of Nip getting hot. I'm not convinced that Nip is still not the same ninjas that failed to qualify for the majors. It could be the same team. This is just a tournament where they were hot, and Phase might have been cold, which we've seen that in the past. You know, Phase Ooh. is not a they're they're one of those guaranteed for semis and sometimes the finals, but they're not a guaranteed win. No team is now. It all depends on Rez. If Rez turns out to be the player they thought he would be, which a lot of people, including you know JW's tweet out there saying Rez in 2016, he said Rez is the best European player or will be. So, I mean, if, if he lives up to the expectations, he's still young. I mean, this is still a, a new team. You have let go of one of your senior players. So I think giving them time, although there's been some time here, is important. Again, you still can't have losses to teams like Team 5 and Pride. At the end of the day, that's inexcusable. That's on you. But going forward, hopefully this is like a, you know, a stepping point for them into becoming a more consistent and more dominant team. It's it's yeah, setting it, up the, the the path for the next major qualifier. I mean, you, you use these yeah. tournaments as ways to say, hey, where do we actually scale up against the top squad? And then that way, use it as a confidence builder to builder just to go in and destroy, you know, teams like Pride. I th- th- so I want to get into it here with you, Brett and Anuj. You can you could take my side on this, okay? Easy. Um. <laughs> so before you know, I know Anuj because both of you are Ninjas fans, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And you both have jerseys that just fit your bodies. Oh, perfectly. perfectly. Uh, you can see all the curves. It's so nice. So, Anuj, on a scale of like 1 to 10, were you are you excited to see Nip win this tournament? Yeah, I'm always happy to see them do well. I mean, I'm more, I would say, like a get right is who I root for. That's my guy. So anytime get right is like playing well, you know, I feel happy and I, I love to root for, for him. Um, yeah, I was happy to see a different team take it. You don't see these kinds of upsets in back-to-back semis and grand finals. Usually you get that big semis win, and then they go into the grand finals and won't get stumped by that next elite team, right? I thought it was incredible to see them beat the top two teams in the world in back-to-back, a best out of three and a best out of five. I don't think that's something that will happen often over the next year. Um, if I think ever. You'll... Yeah, I mean, if just ever. not not even nip. Like, I'm just talking about a team back to back beating SK in phase. Um, when, when, you know, how likely is that to happen? How many teams out there that are actually able to do that? And I think that number is, you know, less than two or three. Astralis, who hasn't looked the same and didn't even make it out of group stage. Um, so there's just not many teams out there that can compete at that level. So to see them do it back to back, that's what excited me about this tournament. And then, Brett, what is your response? Just tell Our the class. Is, tell the class. All right, all right Skip Ten Tim. <laughs> you want to be? Like, it's not even. Look, what I was telling Tim pre-show is that he said, like, "Yeah, this, he doesn't no, care." No, 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 no. He said that, that me, he hates me, Nip, me. and he doesn't care if they win. <laughs> no, that's not what I said. I was saying that I enjoyed watching this tournament. It was fun. You know, it went the way that you thought it was going to be. Each team won their map pick, and then the last game, you know, Nip wins on cash even though exists didn't exist the uh, first four maps. Uh, he kind of came through that last map. But what I was telling Tim is that I'm a Nip fan, but I cannot fake being like jumping on the couch excited about my team winning when there's a tournament every weekend. Like, I- I'm sorry, I just can't. It- it's-, it's hard for me watching as much Counter-Strike as I watch to just just be jumping on the couch, fist pumping, excited about, you know, each of these wins. I, I'm sorry. I enjoyed watching it. And I said that I, I really enjoyed watching these matches, but I can't fake just overwhelming joy when my team wins one tournament before they lost like the last 
four or five in the last like four or five months. No, you know, I'm like, in the same boat as that. You know, like I mean, I, like I said, I was happy. I, I was happy to see them win. Um, but it's not a major. If it's not a major, it doesn't Thank excite you. me in CS in the same sense. But like can I we, feel like it but needs. But can, to... we can still admit though that not all tournaments are created equal, but there are some bigger than others. Like, I you understand know, like, I am Oakland, Cologne, yeah, and Cologne Oakland. or ESL I mean, 1 or any of the, I mean, really any ESL event is normally kind of a big one, but all 10 of them, those, though, well, I mean, you have, look at the EPL, <laughs> how many leagues are in soccer over there that people get excited and for? I, that's something I can get excited for. Because like, you're oh, like you made for, uh, the, there's several, how many are... games, Tim, Tim, how many, how many games are in an ESL pro league season? They're, they're, it, it stretches. There's so many games that you play. Yes, you can get excited for it because this is something you've been working for for like six months. Yeah, you can get behind that. But but there are still there's like three games tiers that they have of to tournaments, play to right? Qualify for this tournament. Like your team, but like for example, like Cloud Nine winning IEM Oakland definitely means a lot more than Cloud Nine winning the I Buy Power Cup. Okay. Maybe part I of it is that MIP that. standards are slightly higher too, right? Like if I buy, if Cloud9, no, 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 not in like a, they, not I in think kind of that kind of way, but you know what I mean. Just about like, the same at this point. It, this past year, right? But like Brett and I have also seen a lot of his success from NIP over the past five years, right? So yeah. it's a little different when we see them win. I am Oakland versus going out there and like, I'm more disappointed that they didn't make the major than I am excited about them winning I am Oakland, right? Um, I think. It's just it's like a it's like a playoff game. I'm excited and and I'm happy that we won it, but it's not the Super Bowl, right? Right. We still have, and I like, understand a, a to not raise the banner, but it's, to be like, ah, well, until me. they fix the oversaturation in Counter Strike, and it's just not me. It's players griping about it all the time too on Twitter. It's there's too many matches, there's too many games, there's too many tournaments. Until they fix oversaturation in Counter Strike, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna like fake. And I agree. like I said, you know, I'm not I'm... disagreeing. There, there is way too many Counter Strike tournaments, and when we get into e news here in a second, we'll talk about one that to me makes <laughs> zero sense on why it exists and why people are pimping it out so much on Twitter. Yeah. But I do think that there the... are tournaments out there that should mean a little more than others. Where you know, this is the one of them. I, I agree with that. This is this is definitely one of those where it means a little bit more than winning like a SIVO main event, you know, or like, I mean, even, I mean, like I know, said, like even like, scale. like take, take, I'm not saying just I buy power, but take a scale of an I buy power invitational tournament, right? Like, yeah, that's neat and all, but it, it's kind of designed. The best to, teams in the world. And anytime yeah. the best teams in the world are involved, it's exciting to get that win. Like this yeah, was, yeah. yeah I buy power is kind of designed just to be an advertisement for I buy power. Like, let's get real. Yeah. Like that's all and that this is. This is a bigger one. I'm not saying this is not a bigger one. So I agree with you there. This is a bigger one. And I'm more excited about this. than I would be about 80% of the tournaments that, that take place throughout the year. But I'm also not like, jumping out my window screaming at the top of my right. lungs like i say i don't I really think, only do that like, for a major like as nip fans i don't think you should be able to i think like as if you're a ninjas fan like definitely be happy with this win and you could probably talk smack for a week and then after that things get back down to earth and you know you're you're back to being ninjas in pajamas. You're out of a major right right but i mean for this small window of time like this is a you just beat sk in phase like, take it for yeah. what it is. Don't be like, well, I mean, there was a tournament last week that you lost. I mean, you just take it take it for what it is. I just want you to I be happy, Brett. Watching it. I just want you to I'm, be happy. I'm happy. Just <sighs> You know, I don't know why you I don't know why you hate ninjas being happy so much. But are I'm you happy like that, I'm happy you that you're happy for me being happy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just <laughs> saying, man. Alright, but no, let's really though, let's let's get into this though, because Decide with you, all right? Because I feel like we need to just hug it out. Let's get into some <laughs> e news here. Um, speaking of things that make no sense on why they exist, this Blast Pro series that is starting this weekend does it have hot Russian girls on their advertisement? Um, no, but it has just about everyone else, man. Like, so I mean, it has a big talent. It's got uh, Machine, Henry G, Sadikis, Anders, Moses. Uh, Vendetta. Who is this Sarah Frost, Sadiq? She's like the other main host. Never heard of her I don't before. Know, dude. I don't know. I don't know. Let's uh, let's see. Am I interested though? Am I interested in this uh, show host? 
You will be if you go to her on Instagram. Oh, I am very interested in this tournament all of a sudden. Okay. I anyway, it's always right. interesting. Never heard of her before, but um, there she is. I'm a... Uh, I'm on board with this Blast series. I think this is a very important tournament that teams need to focus on. And I will focus on the show for you guys. I will focus on the tournament for the show. But no, in all seriousness, I don't get it. It's literally a tournament that kind of has been approaching. I've been seeing people tweet a lot about it. Um, they're doing this crazy format um, where... Sing so there's six teams. It's a round robin tournament. Two teams move on to the grand finals. Then for the playoffs, that's group stage. Playoffs is grand finals will play out in a best of three. Then you have the teams that didn't qualify for the grand finals. These teams, third to sixth place, will play in a blast pro standoffs, a prize bonus show match where the third place chooses their opponent from the three other teams, making the other matchup a given. These two winners of the Blast Pro standoffs take home a ten thousand dollar prize. Does did anybody care about that part? Did, did you follow all of that? <laughs> but like, that's a huge selling point. Is like all new format, money given out, and it's like, uh, uh, what? Like, why? Like, you you want to talk about tournaments that just kind of popped up because of money? This is it. Like, this was solely popped up because of money. And I swear they're paying people to tweet out about it more than others because... Oh, 100%. Because they're all talking okay, about this. Okay, I'm not like wrong, it's the biggest event right? Of the year. No, it's every single one of them, I've seen it so much. And I'm like, wait a minute. Dude, is I... You, like, somebody owns this or somebody is, like, behind this that is in the scene. That's yes, the only thing that makes that sense is to me. That is just somebody that's telling based out or, money. Yeah. I, I agree 100%. I'm glad I'm not the only one that noticed. Like, every but time through, I open up PGL, the Twitter... Right? Um, it is. It is through PGL. So, I mean, you know, there's that. So there's, like, money involved already anyway. Yeah. But my, yeah, no, it's, you open up Twitter, everyone's talking about it. Like, this has just been some historical event that's been around for the dawn you of You know time. what's funny? I can tell you the talent, and I can't tell you the teams in it, because the talent's been tweeting about the themselves being in it nonstop. <laughs> the, I don't even know who's well, in it. Well, and, like, they made huge announcements. Like, when they announced the talent, it was, like, a huge announcement on Twitter and how they announced it. And I'm like, I just... The the build-up for this tournament, there's no way it lives up to it. You have Astralis Phase, G2, NIP, North, and SK. So, again, this is one of those tournaments where you have top teams... You, the same play out could happen in this tournament. Nip could beat SK and FaZe and win the whole thing. And I'm telling you right now, in no way will it make sense, but like this tournament means less than IEM Oakland. Same same scenario could play out, but it just means a little less because it's like, what was this tournament, you know, a year ago? Yeah. Nothing. They do have the top six in the world, so that's, that's a plus. And I, I think that's kind of the selling point, but... I just, I just feel like it's. Oh, forced. actually, Cloud Nine took over six instead of North. <laughs> oh man, moving so on five, up in the five out of the top six. <laughs> wow, Nip jumped all the way to four. Uh, well, bro, that's 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 CS:GO rankings. That's for another time, because those rankings fluctuate more than, more than fucking. Ooh, well. Oh, family show! Man. Family show! Oh, family man. show! Swear jar! Oh, I'm oh, swear jar! Oh, oh no! Oh, I got casual. Man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, oh man! I'm sorry, oh, man. kids. We're not ready already. Earmuffs! Earmuffs! We lost all that sponsorship Dang. money. What will we do? Send the sponsorship money back. We don't deserve <laughs> it. We don't deserve it. Uh, all right, let's be adults here. Um, ESL Pro League, that wrapped up actually a couple weeks ago. We're just now bringing it up, though, because, uh, let's face it, not a whole lot happened over the weekend. Uh, but that's been finalized. On the Europe side, you have Fnatic, North, FaZe, Astralis, Nip, and Hellraisers all qualifying. Uh, you do have a bonus European team with Optic Gaming, depending on what uh, league you want to follow. They might be Europe, they might be North American, who knows. Um, but they do fall under North American here. They also, you have SK, Team Liquid, NRG, Misfits, and Luminosity. So the North American is pretty much a ragtag group. Who's, uh, who's missing from that group? Um, well, you have Cloud9. Oh. They're missing. But they, they, um, 
I mean, no, I'm just playing. To not yeah, make no, excuses, <laughs> they failed to qualify last week during the iBuy Power Cup, where it was like, they who was it? It was like them, Renegades, Optic. I mean, anyone at the iBuy Power Cup were also playing in ESL the same nights. So it's like but I feel like this is like something that they should dominate. Like they went 14 and 12 in this season. They no excuse overall just not to be in it. Yeah, it's disappointing because you have the top most popular North American team. Yeah, not qualifying it, for this event. It definitely did not shape up the way they wanted to. But again, it's the, the schedule was a mess. It just it was kind of ugly overall. But that's more so ESL's problem if anything, right? Like, set up your league to where you're not playing on the same weekends as other tournaments. Like, don't have your final weekend on a same weekend as I Buy Power Cup where half of your North American side is playing in a tournament. This could be like the end of Immortals altogether in CS relevancy because they are going to be fighting for relegation here. Yeah, you had Ghost, which I guess is Hiko's new team. I, I learned that before the show. Um, they are going to ESA Premier. You have Rogue and Immortals on the American side playing for uh, relegation. On the Europe side, you have Big is moving down. That's kind of insane considering the hype around them from the major. And then you have Godsent and Navi playing for relegation. So either way that goes, that's kind of a big deal. You have LDLC and Heroic are teams that made it Above them. We, we, we got that backwards. I know we talked about this pre show, but he goes on Rogue. Rogue. Okay. Yeah, I guess he went back. I, I think he was on loan or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He okay. Was back and forth. Okay. So he goes still on Rogue. Okay. Yeah, he's on Rogue. I guess I, uh, my, my finger is on the pulse of the CSGO scene, and I didn't hear about that. Yeah, he did play for Ghost Gaming, I think, for like a few games. And I can't find anywhere on the interwebs where I saw this, but I swear. I saw it, that Virtus Pro is still going to be in the Premier League. Yeah, they are. They they failed to qualify back into contention. Yeah, they I, lost to, and I can't remember the team. I but they, cannot yes, they find this to Premier. save my life, but I know I saw that somewhere. So Virtus Pro is still struggling. Despite how they will show up at big tournaments, they are struggling to, you know, you know what uh, Coach Keys always told me in high school football. Take care of the little things, and the big things will take care of themselves. And that's a motto to live by, gentlemen. You play football? Uh, you know, I put on the pads. I put on the pads. <laughs> I don't know what you want to call that, but you know, we do what we we, we do what we can. Which is kind of how I feel about this episode. You know, we put it together, we made it through, and it was the best one ever. Thank you again for listening to. TCR, a.k.a. The Center Ring, a.k.a. your favorite esports podcast. Again, our website, tcr.gg. It's got all our social media links on there, but be sure to follow us on Twitter and join our Discord. Uh, what else? We will be back next week. Like I said, we did the week, or we did this week early because of Thanksgiving. We'll be back next week, though, maybe on schedule, maybe not. Uh, the holiday... Let me just say this. With the holiday starting, the schedule is kind of at mercy for the next coming month or two. Just because we never know what our holiday schedules are going to be like. Um, but until next week, for Anuj, for Brett, I'm Tim. See you later.